Hello everyone, it's Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo here for another five for the CM. Before we do that, I just wanted you to have a heads up here. I'm going to do another little walk around of the Gladiator here in the Revel and York hangar. Since the last video was very, very, very dark, there won't be any commentary here. You'll be hearing me and Ben in the background. But enjoy it. It's going to be pretty fun and pretty nice to look at. That's all I have for you right now, except for two corrections in the Gladiator. The first one is the Gladiator is not a surplus military vessel. The Gladiator is actually a, a civilianized military vessel that's brand new. It's gone through the same civilianization of a military piece of hardware that the Gladiator, that the Anvil Hornet has gone through. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can go look at the lore and see where we got the Hornet from. The second piece is I pointed to the turret area and said that the big round area behind the turret was where another turret could go. I'm totally wrong about that. Thank you very much. Um, I'm not going to give out your name, but thank you very much for setting me straight. That's where the engine and cooling system is and a whole bunch of other material. And you can go into the comm link and look for the Gladiator um, article that was in Popular Mechanics or Popular Science. It was Popular Science. So with that said, let's jump right into the interview with Ben in this week's Five for the Community Manager. And welcome everyone to another episode of what we're calling Five for the CM and Ben Lesnick has joined me once again. Welcome to the show, Ben. Uh, thank you. Always a pleasure. Thank you very much. I feel like throwing you these questions is just copying every single thing you go over and around the verse and reverse the verse, but I guess not everybody watches that. No, I mean, you say it as many places as you can. Hopefully people get the message. Yeah, well, we're going to touch on a couple of subjects today. And a couple of them I'm asking for some really good, you know, really loyal um, viewers of mine. So the first thing that I want to ask you has to do with, um, I, I guess people like to play World of Warcraft and things like that, where they get titles for getting certain accomplishments. So what they're looking for can you explain to us the ideas you have for giving credit to someone that does something extraordinary in the game? For instance, if they survive a huge battle, discover a star, sy star system, or explore a planet first. Uh, yeah, the idea there is that we want people's accomplishments to go down in our fictional history. So uh, with World of Warcraft, if you get your buddies together and you go off and kill some boss, that boss immediately respawns, and it's just a process. You can do it again and again and again. Um, in Star Citizen, our idea is that there is one pirate leader, and the person who ends up killing them will be, you know, they'll be all over the comm link, they'll be in the Galacticpedia, it'll be, you know, they'll be the name that's on the lips of everyone in the Star Citizen universe. We're building kind of our news service thing around that. Uh, when you discover a star system, uh, the idea is you get to name it. So forever and ever your name is in the star citizen world uh and we, we want these things all to be very 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 difficult these should be you know a massive amount of work a tiny number of people will ever achieve this but it's it's a goal that everybody can get to and it's not something you can buy your way into it's not uh not something that resets after you're done also okay so is there something specific that you can tell us that an organization might be recognized for in-game? Well, organizations are going to have all sorts of uh, impacts on the game world. Um, you know, we're looking at organizational warfare. We're looking at how organizations impact the economy. So we, we want to create kind of the same system. So, you know, whatever organization is now shipping you know, titanium to Planet X is letting them produce hornets faster. That's your headline. Uh, you okay. Know, whatever ship, yeah, they're part of the supply chain now. Uh, and it, we're looking at all, all sorts of different options for that. Cause we want to treat organizations like people. They, we want them, the big organizations, the successful organizations, the underdog organizations that come out of nowhere to have some great victory. We want to celebrate that with, uh, in the inside the game world. Okay. Now, this goes back to our favorite subject, which is characters, <laughs> okay? I love the character. I know. They're the characters. <laughs> uh, I love yeah. the character, too. I'm so happy I got <laughs> one. I am so happy I got one. All right. Will each character get back or reward items, or will they be assigned to one character only? Laser pistol sidearm at $16 million, The RSI class 
two spacesuit with test pilot colors. In other words, these people might have two, three, four, five packages. Do they only get that one reward so only one of their many alts gets to wear it? I believe it's going to be one per account and you'll, you'll be able to distribute it to whichever character you want. Uh, okay. Otherwise, you know, it's, it's obviously, you know, if some person buys 50 character slots, they, they shouldn't get 50 of the reward when someone who has just one gets one. I think it's got to be one per account. Okay. If that character dies while wearing that device and they are not recovered, do they lose that reward? No, no. We'll, we'll find a way to preserve the stuff you guys earned early on. We, we haven't specified the details of insurance for items in cargo yet, but uh, we don't ever intend to make a game that punishes you for supporting us early. Okay. okay. So that's, you know, these are question groups, but that's one person. Next one. Will NPCs created from a player's open character slots be hireable by all of their characters, or will they be assigned to only one character? Do you understand what he's saying? Yeah, yeah. He's thinking, oh, if I have three characters, can I hire an NPC? With, you know, the answer should be yes. We're still putting that system into action, but yes, you, sh you should have that amount of All player. right. And the second part of that question is, if my NPC characters are hireable, is there a place or a possibility that I could put them up to be hired by other players in the game so I can make money off that? Yes, we're looking at that too. Okay. So it's just so people understand that, I have like 10 character slots and I might only be playing one. And what that question from this person, I think this is Renegade Shank, would be, now this isn't, this is somebody else. He asked the first part of that question. Um, if I have nine of those characters that I'm not playing, could I send them out to be hired by other people so I make money? So, Ben, thank you very much for that answer. That's good. That's good. Okay, could you share with us some of the challenges the dev, the dev team is being faced with in getting the Idris and other larger ships into the hangar module? When will we see the Idris in the hangar module? And how could we expect to access it its own hangar starport shuttle to go up to it what's you know you, you know what i'm saying i do a lot of that is things i can't say yet okay we've, we've talked about a number of different options for large ships uh, the hangars are expandable now so if we want to make a really huge version of the current ones we can do that um We've also talked about doing like a sea hangar or a space-based hangar where you leave your hangar in a shuttle and go up to your capital ship in orbit. Uh, we haven't decided on one or the other yet. Um, easiest thing right now probably is just expanding the current hangars, but that, that's an ongoing debate. Um, okay. As for challenges in terms of the development of those ships, the, the big thing right now is the 64-bit uh, conversion, which is going to let us do larger maps and enable multi-crew ships. Okay. Uh, so that, that's our big tech challenge right now. We're making great progress. We, it's on schedule. Um, and once that happens, for Arena Commander 2.0, you'll see the editors in action. Okay. Now, I think this one speaks to one of the things that came out in Chris's letter this week. Stretch goals are traditionally associated with crowdfunding campaigns. Star Citizen has been holding their own campaign for over two years now. And finally, the stretch, stretch goals have seen a sunset. Can you share with us some of the conversation that you've had internally about stretch goals? For instance, the original poll on shutting them down earlier, and if you think that they went a little bit too long. Um, I will say, I, I don't want to say they went too long, and I, I, I will also stress that they're not, not over yet. We're just not necessarily giving you a new game feature for every million, because that honestly confused people more than it... Uh, help to some degree right so as as we get great ideas if if somebody comes into the office tomorrow and says hey i figured out how we can do procedural starship generation and it'll, it'll just we just have to change our schedule this way that'll be a stretch goal okay. uh but we're not going to sort of reach for them at this point you know it got to the point where we were feeling like you know so far it was things we pulled from our wish list and it was just getting to the point where our wish list is out there uh Maybe there's, there's plenty on our wish list, but a lot of it is crazier stuff that will go beyond, you know, a million dollars does this. Okay. Uh, so that, that was kind of the root of the decision there. You'll still see stretch goals in the future. You'll still see uh, player rewards. Um, you're just going to see a lot more in between about the making of the game, the, you know, drilling down to the GDD, TDD level of how stuff is going to work. Okay. 
Um, and then, of course, I asked my own question, and this one's going to have to do with the hanger module, okay? One of the uh, limitations of the current hangers right now seems to be lighting, which I know has been up, is being upgraded. But another limitation seems to be the limitations on the number of ships that you could have, and some of them being labeled as small, medium, large when they're not. Um, take, for instance, this week, the release of the Gladiator is... Re is it is labeled as a medium ship, so it has to take up its own hangar bay. Are these some things that we could expect to be changed in the coming patches before or right after 1.0? It won't be before 1.0 because we are we're getting close there. Yeah. Uh, but it is something we've talked about for the future. Uh, I think if you recall earlier in the campaign, we had basically the same limit, but we let people kind of go into the back end and right. change their back ships if you had a good enough computer. Um, we have talked about how to do that again and have a plan percolating, I would say. Right. See, one of the uh, current issues right now is a gladiator has to take up its own side of a hangar. Oh, that should be fixed now. Oh, it should be? Good. Because was, yeah, you, I be wanted to put it next to my Hornet. That's great, Ben. I really appreciate it. And uh, next week will be our last one of the year, I hope, because I'm going to grab you just before your uh, Friday... Uh, live stream which i will not be able to watch because i will be working my butt off but i wish you guys luck so we will be recording that sometime. yeah uh, you better not later. you better not put anything up for sale that i have to buy during the live stream because i'll be at work <laughs> um, I, I don't think that we, need, I mean, we will have some you know flash sales and so on but i don't think any of it is gonna be it, it's nothing new you text, in that respect, anyway. Okay, you text me if it's anything good. <laughs> okay. All right, Ben, thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you again next week. Absolutely, anytime. Thank you. Oh, God. I see a cat in back of you. Well, that was very nice of Ben to join us yet again for another one of those episodes, and I do want to tell you all, Star Citizen Annex Anonymous will be coming back shortly. I have been working a lot, and I do have time for these short five-minute videos, and I do have time for the Let's Plays, because I don't have to do a lot of production work with that. But I do have the script for the next one of my Star Citizen Addix Anonymous videos, and I will be doing another one next week. I plan on shooting tomorrow and getting it put together before end of the weekend. I would apologize to you all, but, you know, work... I have to work to pay the bills if I was paying the bills with YouTube. Believe me, you'd have one of those videos all the time. With that said, you all be safe out there, and I will talk to you soon.